Thank you, Lisa. I'm sorry. I forgot to hit record. We all this crazy. I forgot to hit record. Uh, that's all right. So I'll tell you what, though. Um, I will. Um, I'll put this into the group then afterwards so that even though um, you've forgotten to record it, everybody can see the beginning. Well, I of just this. hit record. So I, now I am recording it. Okay. So that's okay. what I'm saying. And so the first 10 minutes, we can either back up a minute or else we'll just read the first parts. If you missed that part, I am so sorry. Thank you, Lisa, for being a very helpful co-host to remind me. I was just so into it. I was like, <laughs> well, once again, I'll go ahead and put this PDF or not PDF, this PowerPoint up uh, in the group if I can. And uh, and then everybody can have a hold of it. So we won't really have to go back at all either. OK, perfect. Thank you. So, Thank you. Not a problem. So once again, I prefer to work on top of the fabric uh, and um, and then the French version is below the fabric. I'll show you both of those in short videos at the end here. So this little project um, uses basic tambour embroidery and um, it's all clear beads. I'm using uh, the DMC cotton that changes color. So what you're seeing is, uh, is you're seeing the, the, um, the color of the thread through the beads. And uh, it, this is about four inches across and it took about four hours to make. Okay, so let's go on and I'll show you. The thing about tambour is it is hard to start and stop. So what you, you'll see I do is I really try to take one line with each of the colors and go all the way back and forth and back and forth. So I've gone ahead in the uh, left there and I've placed the fabric in the frame and I've pulled it tightly. And then I go ahead and I put a piece behind and then I just draw it over the top. And then the third one on the right hand side, you see I've started something called basic chain stitch with beads. And you'll see me do this as, uh, as when we get into the videos, you'll see me. So if we can go on to the next one. It basically looks like chain stitch in embroidery as you do it, but you do it basically like, um, for those of you who know how to crochet, it's basically crocheting through a piece of fabric. You capture the, you take the bead and you cap, thread it onto your needle on the top and you'll see me do this. So if you're like, what is she talking about? Don't worry, you'll see what I mean. So I take the beads and I put them onto the, the hook, the needle, and then I slide them down onto the thread. And then I crochet through the fabric and catch the thread in the back. And you can see that I'm going back and forth. So in the one on the left, I've gone down with beads and then I've come up with plain chain stitch. And then I go down with beads and then go up. And so when I go up, it's in, in almost the same place. So it goes underneath that beadwork. So I'm just going back and forth and back and forth. And you can see that in the middle, I have finished with the yellow and I've started with the purple. And then on the one on the right, that's what the back looks like of the piece. So you're working with multiple colors at a time. No, I, I did all the yellow first okay. and then I switched to the purple. But the only place I put the beads was I went when I went down from the top of the petal down to the bottom, I put beads on the way down and then I basically chain stitched back up to the top mm -hmm. underneath those beads. So I've sort of got a hidden row under there. And then I chain stitched down with the beads and up without beads to the top. So once again, that the picture number six, which is to the right is the back. Okay, and then I just keep on going. So if you go on to the next page, so you can see I've kept on going. just adding more color. And then I went and did the top section of the petals, which are called the standards. The bottom sections of irises are called falls. And then the last thing I did was the, uh, the um, oh, I guess I did, the, I did do the green before. 
-hmm. So, but I, you know, you only do one color at a time, you finish that, and then you go on and you try to really, it's like drawing a picture without ever bringing the pen up because starting and finishing is the hardest part on this. If you know anything about, um, about crocheting, you know, if you don't finish your knot and you accidentally pull the thread, then the whole row comes out. So you have to go ahead and, and finish each color before you start the next one. And you don't want to start and stop. You don't want all those uh, knots in there. You want to go ahead and, and use as few knots as possible. So once the um, beadwork is done in that last picture on nine, and then we'll go on and I'll show you sort of how I finished this picture out. So what I did is um, I actually took it off and put a piece of uh, Thai Dupiani silk underneath there so that it wouldn't be see-through anymore. And then put it back in. I did a running stitch around the back there so you can see it pulls all the cut edges. And then what I don't have is a picture of how I finished that off. I just glued a piece of felt on the back so that it looked nice. So on the next page, you'll see that picture finished. And once again, that took about four hours to do. Oh, so there's it finished. And um, you could just hang it like that. And here's the list of what I used, just in case you want to try something out like that. Unfortunately, I don't have the pattern anymore. I, I, I managed to lose that. But um, so anyway, that that is is sort of how it's done. But but it doesn't really until you see the videos next, which I'm going to show you. Uh, you can't really see you. It, it doesn't it probably still doesn't make sense. The actual stitch itself. Uh, before we get into any of those videos, let me show you a couple of my finished projects. This project I did just sort of for this class. Um, another way to finish this off is if you take a look at this piece, this is a purse. The pieces that are, um, that look like, they look like little feathers. Uh, would you go ahead and use your pointer there? And, and there you go, that little feather. That was done with tambour, and that's actually both sides of the purse. And what I did is I just folded the uh, raw edge to the back and then edged it with bricks at brick stitch uh, pico edging and then glued it onto a purse there. So that's another way to go ahead and finish off your, your embroidery if you want to. So if I show you on the next one, a lot of times what actually will happen, uh, that section at the back of this piece, which is the big flower is done with tambour. Uh, a lot of times it's done on a type of uh, material that doesn't really fray all that well. And so what you can go ahead and do is you can just go ahead and you can just cut it and applique it down. And a lot of time that's what is done with tambour nowadays is it is done on a, um, a non-fraying fabric, something, something that is like, um, like the mosquito netting or, or a um, polyester netted fabric that you can just cut and then go ahead and just sort of burn the edges. And that's how this one is done is I just went ahead and cut it out and then applicated on for my 2021 Toho challenge. What was the what was the colorway of this? What was modern? Was this modern? This, this was, was the modern traditions. Right. Um, so anyway, uh, this one was supposed to start by uh, this jacket. That jacket was supposed to be kind of a house of worth thing, and it ended up looking like something the Beatles would uh, <laughs> wear. So I just kind of went with it. Here's two other pieces that I did with tambour. Uh, the one to the left was last year's um, mm -hmm. Toho Challenge, uh, Dawn of a New Day. And my idea there was to use Van Gogh's Starry Night, which was really the beginning. It's considered the beginning of modern art. And also I paired it with denim, which when it came out, it really was a, a working man's kind of clothing, but now it's used for haute couture. So I thought that those were both 
indicative of a dawn of a new day. Um, the one to the right is a piece that is done with a traditional backstitch bead embroidery and uh, some uh, tambour embroidery and some gold work. And that's just a Luna moth that I kind of just made because I felt like it. <laughs> And then I think I have one more that I can show you. Yeah, these ones are three dimensional pieces that I've been working on. And each of those is a, a piece that is cut out uh, and it ha then has, um, and it's either three dimensional for instance, um, the pitcher plants to the, to the right over there, all three dimensional uh, and they're stuffed. They're like, they're like stuffed animals, they really are. Uh, they are the ones um, in the middle are turkey tail uh, fungus with a moth, a hawk moth, and then they're all three dimensional. They have wire inside and they're stuffed and, and they, the photos don't show the three dimensionality of them, but they are all done with tambour. I and that. I think that's it. So I think the next thing I want to show you is how the stitch is done actually, you know, because you've seen all the different parts and pieces, you've seen a sort of slideshow of it in progress, but you actually haven't seen how it is done and accomplished. So uh, if you would be so kind as to try to find the one that is the chain stitch, the basic chain stitch is the one I'm gonna show you first. This is without beads. So, the basic chain stitch, a lot of Guatemalan and South American embroidery is done with tambour embroidery and it's this basic chain stitch. If you would go ahead and start and, and basically you go here, I'm making a loop and then I pull the, the end through and that makes my knot. And I'm sorry, it's kind of slow. I apologize here. So I go in and below, you can see I've got all the info, all the, um, the thread below and I grab it and I just pull it up. So it's just like doing chain stitch. So I put it down once again, grab the thread below and pull it up and you can see that chain happen up above. Can you see that? So, so that's how stays attached to the little hook. I see. Well, yeah. So the hook, I, what I do is I go ahead and I basically I'm wrapping the free end around and then there's a little lever that closes that, that helps keep the, uh, the thread together. And then when I'm done, I just can pull it up and pull it out. And that makes a little knot. So I push it down. I wrap the thread around, pull it up, and then I can pull the edge through and it makes a little knot. So that's actually the only stitch that I do, but how you add beads is really the trick. So if we could then find the, um, the one that says beads on top, beads on top, is the one that I prefer. It is the Indian method. I like doing the beads on top because I can grab each bead one at a time. Oops. When I do it down below, I have to actually load all the beads in advance. All right, it's coming. I had it loaded. What was wrong with it? There it is. Come on, sorry. Yeah, it's okay. It was loaded and now why it's slow, it's stuck. Let me try this again. Um. Yeah, um, unfortunately with my, um, with my phone here, I can't, I can't, I can do photos, but I can't Don't do worry. video. So give us just a second, you guys. 
One second. We're one second. I think you have to have it open, don't you? Well, that's what I, I did. So hold on, let me one second. Because it keeps pulling up the other one. Mm -hmm. And so, and then something is one second. Click exit, which is the exit button. Maybe escape. Escape, okay, let's try that. Um, did you hit share screen? Yeah, she did. It's just showing her 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 um, desktop, not the not the video there. Okay. Right. So one second. Let me just open the video again first here before I. It was only letting me have one video open at a time, so I had all three, but it kept closing them, and uh -huh. so. I apologize. Yeah, they are they are kind of hogs. I'm sorry about that. They they do use quite a bit of. And so we're we're getting it. Come on. Ooh, okay. Like I said, it worked beautifully earlier. Of course. And remember, it worked when I um. There it is. It's tested. coming. Right. Exactly. Oh, and of course, that's the wrong one. Oh my gosh. Well, oh. which one? Which it's one the that? chain stitch. It was the same one. It was the chain okay. stitch. Okay. If the one underneath happens to come up first, we'll talk about that one first. Okay, we'll do that. I just had to undo that and then we're we're getting there. Okay, so it's opening. And then as soon as it's open, I'll share it. I just don't want to sit, have to sit there and stare at my screen, whatever, desktop. Come on, it's coming. And so how many years have you been doing tambour embroidery, Hannah? Have you been um, practicing this technique? Well, I learned um, originally, uh, I learned for Nicholas Nickleby in 1992. Uh, and, and at that point, we did an entire show and, and most of the hats actually, we had some sort of uh, tambour on them. So I really, um, after that show, I took probably about a 10 year break from doing it. Uh, that show was, it was a lot of hard work. And, and I think we all kind of just wanted to put it behind us. We ended up making for that show, I was in the hat department, uh, but because uh, we had so much embroidery to do, I ended up doing quite a bit uh, on the weekends. So we had uh, 250 hats to make for that show. And then we had uh, about the same number of costumes of which about um, only, only I'd say about 20 of the costumes were embroidered. Um, but um, so anyway, you know, it was sort of, it was sort of learning by, by trial by fire. Um, so this is how I prefer to do, uh, to do the, uh, tambour bead embroidery and it's exactly the chain stitch only with one uh different technique and you'll see what happens is i will i actually load i'm going to start just normally here just with a couple of chain stitch um how did i learn the technique uh uh i'll answer that question after i talk us through actually let's pause this for a minute if you okay. would yep okay so i can answer that question um so I learned that technique because they brought in a uh, group from the UK into uh, the costume design class that I was taking at Carnegie Mellon University. Um, and they taught that technique uh, from, from this UK embroiderers uh, company. They taught it to uh, all of us in class. And it was just sort of a four hour workshop, but then those of us who were in 
the uh, costume crew for Nicholas Nickleby ended up doing it. Uh, now, what was the rest of your question? Was it was it was it was was it helpful? Oh, uh, what was helpful? Uh, I think practice, uh, and also I once I sat down with someone who really taught me how to do crochet because it's really like hanging onto a very tiny crochet hook. Uh, as soon as you get that tension right, as soon as you get the the crochet hook right, then uh, then it's a lot more more easy. But it's it's you know those of you who are who have tried to teach crochet or remember learning crochet or haven't learned crochet know that part of the problem is really the tension and learning that. Wait, and, so is um, this a medium tension, a light tension? No, you want a very tight tension. And that's oh. actually why um, when we get to the next one, which is the, uh, the, the French version of this version that I'm going to show you right now is the Indian version where you work on top of the, of the piece. That's, that's really all I do. And that's what I learned uh, is, is the UK company came in and they actually taught us the uh, the wrong version because they they thought we were silly Americans and couldn't learn the right version, which is the French version. So they taught us the Indian version and it's the version that I, I like more. I can see what I'm adding. Uh, when you go into the French version, you have to add all your beads in advance and you'll see that onto the thread. So if you change your mind, which I do, I just, you know, I'm an artist, I'll, I'll be going one direction and I'll suddenly want to go in a totally di different direction. And if you already have this plan and all the beads all pretty strong, then you can't really do that. Um, so, but you want a very tight tension and you'll see when I get to the French version, once again, which is the next video uh, that, that my hands are all over a place. There's like really big loops. I'm just, you know, I really have trouble with that technique uh, because it's a really, really loose tension that I'm using and you really want a nice tight one. Okay, let's go on. And, um, and once again, if someone else has a question, I'll stop. So what I'm doing here, I think I've, um, I think we've missed my picking up one of the beads, but okay. what you do is you pick the bead up, you slide it onto the hook and then down onto the thread and it's onto two strands of thread that you've done it. So you've, you've, when you slide it down, it slides over the thread and you pick up either one bead or you can pick up two beads or three at a time. So here I'm going ahead and I'm going ahead and pulling it up through the loop again. And you'll see, I pick up a bead and I put it on and now I'm with my finger, I just slid it down over onto the thread. And now I'm just gonna crochet it in place. I'm sorry, this is so, this is kind of slow. This is, but it, I think you can see what I'm doing here a little bit better. I'm doing a couple, I did a couple of ones um, plain and now I think I've got two beads on there if I remember correctly. And now I'm gonna go ahead and you can slide down two beads at a time, or you could do three. Once we get going a little bit more, I think at one point I'm gonna put on some pearls. Uh, oh, those look like bigger beads that I put. So the first ones I did, I did a couple uh, at a time, and then some bigger ones. Um, what's going on here? Here I'm putting on a sequin, and here I'm putting on, uh, a bugle bead. So you so are put, moving as far as the bead? Exactly right. So each stitch is just as far as the bead. Here I put on, I didn't put on a bugle bead. I put on a seed bead, a bugle bead, and then another seed bead because the bugle beads are very sharp. So if you put a seed bead, a bugle bead, and then another seed bead on it works kind of like a um, a cushion. And so you can see I'm just going back and forth, putting on some. So here you can see it slid onto both of those. Can you see? And now I'm gonna go down through that loop and grab the thread underneath. Okay. 
and each time I change it, I just do a couple of uh, individual without any bead work on it. just to get ready for the next thing, which is, I think, sequence. And then I think that's it for this one. Uh, what do I think the advantage of tampor work is? Um, or do I use both? Um, uh, here I'm doing the sequence. Uh, so if you would pause that for a minute so I can talk about, uh, answer Marsha's question there. The nice thing about tambour embroidery is that you end up with a piece that doesn't cover the whole piece of, em of embroidery. It's a, lot, um, it's a lot lighter. You usually do it on a sheer fabric. And, um, and once again, you know, with traditional embroidery, bead embroidery, a lot of times it's more coverage than, uh, than the tambour has the tambour is technically and and traditionally done on a shear and then it's backed with something else uh, it doesn't really add as much weight as doing regular embroidery and I, th I think you know I think that that once you get good at it it actually does go faster than regular embroidery so I think I think that's the advantage for couture for for something um, like um, you know costume pieces uh, over over traditionally embroidery, I, I think is is just the weight and the and the and the quickness because it can get very quick. I am not very quick at it, but I'm actually quicker at tambour than I am at regular embroidery. And as you can see, I don't do it on laces. I don't do it on a bead foundation. I do it on. Uh, I'm actually using. Um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm using mosquito netting here, which I love for most of my tambour work, uh, except for when I really have high-end stuff and want, it, and want to use silk. So I don't know whether or not that answers. Um, I think more specifically, it's really um, what happened? A, sec, uh, a, a preference is really, really a better way to do it. It's really really a preference. Uh, if you prefer to do tambour, that's great. If you prefer regular embroidery, that's fabulous. Um, if you ask French couture houses, then, then there's only one right answer and it's tambour underneath, which I'm going to show you next. <laughs> so I, does that answer your question at all? Or does it just make you sort of like, I don't know, you know, I think it's just another technique. Um, am I still doing top here? Oh yeah, here I'm, um, I'm going ahead and adding um, tambour using um, sequins. And you can see that each one is sort of overlays about halfway onto the next. Can I tell from the final result whether or not this one has been worked from the top or bottom? Yes, you actually can, Beth. And the reason is, is that uh, the top of that embroidery always, the bottom of that embroidery looks like a little dash and the top of the embroidery always looks like a little sort of um, drop shape because it has two separate, uh, it has, it has, if you look at the screen, it has um, like, a, it starts here, the piece goes here and it goes like this. So, so the piece of, um, of thread. It goes like this, and then the next one starts about halfway up and goes like this, and then the next one goes halfway up like that, and the front always looks like that. So the front will have that kind of a shape if it's top in the thread. If it's done from the bottom, the thread just looks like little dashes. So you can, once you've looked at both of them, you can always tell whether or not it's done the, um, the, the, Indian method or the French method. So we have the last one now. Right. So this is the correct way to do it. And I, I apologize in advance if you pause that for just a second. Uh, my hands get in the way of this very badly. So just bear with me. Um, I, um, I, if you can see through it, you'll see, see 
right up my nose, which is not pleasant, but there it is. Um, but you will um, see that I have trouble. I have this huge loop on the front. If you can, you know, up up top, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm very, I actually went ahead and did this double time because I'm so slow at this that I didn't want you guys to have to wait for like an hour for me to put one bead on. Uh, but you can see what I've done here is I've already strung all these beads and you're working with the beads on the back, which means that heavier beads have a tendency to fall down and you have to grab them. And let's go with it. Let's just go ahead and. So you can see my hands really get in the way here. But what I'm doing is I slide one bead up and then I grab it and then I slide the next bead up. And here I'm, I'm fussing with the front. and. Um, so can you see down to the lower uh, left-hand side, I've got all of those beads pretty strong and I have to push one up and grab it. And once again, you can see that I'm really getting in the way of, of the video here, I, I apologize. But now you can see it when I, when I go to move my hands away. So what I do is I push one bead up and I grab it. Uh, and Anna, so you yeah. really, if you're doing the underneath technique, you really have uh, to know all the beads you're going to use and, and in which order you're going exactly to right. That's what what I was saying earlier, where where you have to pre-plan everything, and that's I'm really bad at pre-planning anything at all. I like to sort of pick my beads and decide where they're going to go. So instead of picking them up from a tray, I have to have everything preloaded onto that string. Absolutely. Uh, Joanne, um, what, I'm, I'm sorry, I missed that one. Hang tight when you get, it looks, it, it actually is, both of them are bead crochet, basically. Um, it's basically bead crochet through a piece of fabric. So if you can crochet, then this, this technique, um, the, the, tambour technique will be a lot easier to learn. Um, but once again, I um, I am really here, I've gone and uh, preloaded some, some petal shaped drops here and I'm putting them on and you can see that they're hanging down below. Um, but yes, if you can crochet, then tambour is a lot easier than if you can't crochet. And I learned how to crochet at the same time I learned tambour. So for me, it was quite difficult to learn. I had never done any kind of crocheting at all before doing tambour. Uh, here we go. So you can see I've really got a loose tension here. And, and But you can see how I put each bead up and then I grab it. Here I'm grabbing the thread, I should say, in front of the bead, and that locks the bead in place. So are you going through the actual bead here or grabbing the thread? I have already loaded the bead, so I am grabbing the thread on in front of the bead. Okay. And then, and then pulling the thread, so I don't actually go through the bead a second time. The good thing that for that is that I can use itty bitty little seed pearls here in this yeah. technique that I would never be able to, I could, you know, I could use size these, I could use beads that, that are extremely small. It's really hard to get a needle, um, a crochet, a uh, tambour bead crochet needle to go through say size 15 beads or seed pearls mm -hmm. or, um, or semi-precious pearl beads that have been, um, been, um, Indian drilled because you know of course that the Indian drilled ones can get very small in the center there. Mm -hmm. So this technique is much better for things like that. And of course the French love to use seed pearls and House of Worth love to use seed pearls. So this was really the only way to do that. Uh, once again, I'm I'm pretty stinky at this. But are you using the same size hook to do this or are you using a bigger one? You can use any size, you can use a big hook to use this, which is the nice one, you know, for the other one, the, you have to be able to load it onto the hook. For this, we don't have to, it just has to be on the thread. Mm -hmm. So I can use very fine thread and a ginormous hook here. But once again, when you have all those beads weighing it down, it gets very hard to sort of push one up. Mm -hmm. and. As soon as you get into things like um, 
into things like um, sequins, which have a tendency to stick together. It can get really rough to try to just get one up. Um, I should say it's rough for me to do it. You know, I've seen I've seen French couture do it very quickly and very beautifully. I I am much better at the top one. That's the one that I learned. Uh, the only reason that I learned the the other version, the version underneath, was so that I could basically do demos and show both techniques. So, so, so what do you guys think? Is it's it crazy, just right? as pretty on the back then, um, when you're doing both techniques, or do is it is it funnier on the back with with the other techniques? Um, like, well, you know it. It doesn't have beads on the back, but it is very pretty on the back. Uh, and it has to be because it's sheer fabric. Mm -hmm. And usually that sheer fabric is is lined with something, but a, a, usually it's not, it's not like it's not two pieces that are put together. A lot of times they're free flowing, like the flapper ones. Mm -hmm. So the back of the fabric has to look at least neat and clean, if not gorgeous. So it does have, you know, doing this technique does make a better look for the back than than regular bead embroidery. Because there's so much dresses on the runway now, like when we were watching, you know, the Oscars and whatnot, and all the beautiful embroideries, and it's all then looks sheer. You can tell it's a mesh in between, right? And then it probably it's all yeah. tambour embroidery because it's specifically placed. Yes, um, if it is on sheer, it is most likely tambour. Uh, because of those sheer backings, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So they're just so beautiful. I mean, it's a really fun technique. But once again, you know, if you don't know how to crochet, if you're just learning to crochet, which is how I learned, I'd never crocheted before. I had knit, but I'd never crocheted. For me, it was an awful lot like you know, you have to rub your stomach and pat your head at the same time. Only, only using really expensive materials. So it was a lot of stress. <laughs> and so the hook, when you're sliding it up and down, does it get caught on the netting or is it closing or are you well, open it, 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 it has or? a little lever on it and that closes. Uh, okay. And uh, so, um, and uh, some of the really fine hooks don't have that lever so they can get caught. And that's actually the reason that, that um, when you put the hook into the, the hook actually can come out of the handle, but when you put it in and you set it with that, that um, screw, you always want the hook to be on the same side as that screw so that you know where it is, so you're less likely to get it caught. You, you, you can learn how to bring it through without it getting caught. That makes sense. Um, so the bigger one sometimes will have a little lever. So the hook is like this and it has a lever that closes. So, and it's at an angle so that it won't get caught, but the smaller ones you still have to worry about. So, wow. so anyway, that is tambour and it's become very popular right now because all gold work is becoming very popular and the multimedia is becoming very popular in with the bead beading. Mm -hmm. Well, you've probably seen quite a bit of gold work uh, around. Um, and I think um, not last summer, but the summer before, didn't Alexandra do a gold work project for our summer classes? There was one of them that she did. Yeah. yeah. And I think there might be, I'm not sure. She, Alexandra is doing our May class and it'll be bead embroidery, these little goddess pendant earrings. Um, yes. But I'm not sure the techniques that we're learning. I, I'm going to get the supply list really close mm -hmm. soon from her. We'll post that too. Um, well, a lot of times, um, Tambour is also done with the gold work. You don't have to do the gold work with tambour. Uh, a lot of times when I do the gold work, it is with, uh, you know, a free needle. Um, but, and I don't think that she taught it when she taught the basket. I think it was called basket of flowers was the one that she did. Too. Correct. Somebody That's the one I did. Yeah. Right. And, and she didn't do it with a tambour hook, did she? No. Uh -uh, no. No. She just did it with a free needle. Absolutely. 
And so it was really interesting. But yeah, I don't feel as apprehensive of starting it now. Um, no, it's really, it's, it's, it's really quite, um, the, the problem is, is that um, there really aren't any good books on it. I actually did pick up a book from Amazon uh, that was called Tambor Bead Embroidery. And it didn't have any, it had black and white photos and it didn't have any beading. It was just tambour embroidery and it did teach tambour embroidery. It's only like a $6 book, but you know, when it's called tambour bead embroidery, you expect them to teach some bead work and they didn't. Uh, and that I believe is the only tambour book currently out on the market unless, unless it's changed in the last six months or so. So. I um, think you're right, Hannah. I went on Amazon and was looking for a book too. And what I found was just kind of junk. Yeah, it's a, like a six dollar book, and it's yeah. just it's just really dismal. So I did find yeah. I put it on the chat. I found a YouTube video from two sisters out of the UK, Sarah and Carolyn Homfrey, H O M F R A Y, and they get in really close, and they show you how to twist the needle and pull it back through. And um, yeah, I, there I are a couple of really nice YouTube ones, absolutely. So you put it in the chat. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. Would you also do like the same type of couching techniques with that or no? Are you talking about the couching the techniques? Number, that I yeah. Taught? So when you're like laying down the metal and whatnot, would you do a tamar couching technique or would you do well, with your beads or? Generally speaking, you know, imagine a lot of the tambour um, techniques that are done with the gold work is if you were to cut the little gold uh, French coils into pieces and then work with them the same way that I worked with the bugle bead. Uh -huh. So you put it on and then you can, you know, you can work with it just like the bugle bead. And that's usually the way that uh, the, the tambour um, gold work is done. Uh, oh. Generally speaking, um, it's 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 an either kind of or thing. It's not it's not, you know, you don't use couching and tambour at this in the same project. It's oh, it's okay. either done one way or the other way, you know. But you wouldn't use a tambour technique to couch something. That's no. what I'm saying. Um, like to lay well, down and get well, like. Actually, I have seen that done. If if you have like a real thick thread you can go back and forth with a thinner right. one using that couching because um, a lot of the indian fabrics they were showing i'm not sure if it right. was tom ford's collection or the it, but i was looking through the spring and they really amazing it is very indian inspired of course right um, yeah but, but i've seen i've seen indian ones put put like use a thinner thread to couch down a thicker one i've never seen it done on on gold work but i've seen it done on a thicker thread like a, a a thick gold thread you know using right. a very or, or those silky threads that are right. kind of right okay right. that makes sense so that you get the raised texture you know exactly well. right exactly okay. right and and it it can look sort of like satin stitch if you do it very yes. close to each other that's i guess what i was thinking about yeah well, okay. or if you do it far farther apart it can look like a zigzag from a sewing machine mm -hmm. imagine you know and so so yes i've seen i've seen that done absolutely but not usually with the with the the gimp with the uh the french coils with coil okay yeah. gotcha okay rochelle i have a suggestion uh-huh since we missed the first 10 minutes when yep. and it's finished you could go back and show her work again and the worth dresses and then they oh. would be in the recording absolutely okay, yeah, you know what, and i can talk about them again if you'd like absolutely let's do it now. very quickly yeah absolutely so, so let's skip the stuff about me everybody knows me here now so let's just um we can start that powerpoint again um and once again i'll and this is actually going to be great because now that you've seen it done you can actually go ahead and see the materials again in use so let's take it all the way back to um i think it's Oh, right, we could do that. Absolutely. Let's just start from the beginning. Mm -hmm. 
So let's just go through this one and through the background on me. We don't need that. And so once again, um, tambour is originated in India on top using the technique that I showed you where it's on top in the 1600s. And then it was really taken over and uh, done underneath in France in the 1700s. And, um, and the reason it's called tambour is it's from the word drum or tambourine. Uh, tambour bead embroidery is all wrapped up in this oak couture. You've heard us talk about that a little bit. Uh, and Charles Worth was really the one who made it popular originally. Uh, and so he became, began his training in London and then moved to Paris in 1845. Uh, this piece to the right is one of my very favorites. It's, it's, it's just out of control gorgeous, I think. So uh, this is all beadwork here, right? Yeah, all that's all beadwork. And you see the sun at the, and the clouds at the bottom. Of, yeah, of that other one, isn't it? It's unbelievable. It's this so piece. beautiful. But, yeah, this one, I think, it, I think it says to the right, it's, I've got all my information, but I believe that one is, should be a, about a uh, 1880s dress. Um, Marsha, are you here? Do, do, what do you think? Is that about an 1880s, do you think? Um, and so uh -huh. here are three others. One to the left is 1880s. The one in the middle, I believe, is an 1890s that was a costume ball piece. It's, it's supposed to be Queen Elizabeth's, but of course, as Queen Elizabeth's as the, the uh, Victorians would do it. And then the one to the right there is, um, is a 1920s flapper piece that is all on, probably on real sheer, uh, silk with tons of fringe. So I definitely, definitely approve of it. So this part here is all the embroidery with the, um, just the floss. And then they've added the beads in between here, right? Exactly. Exactly. And it probably has some, um, lace too. I can't really see it close up. I can't remember. Yeah, that's what, what that I was is. thinking is you yeah. do that cut out lace thing you were talking about. Right. Exactly. So. So anyway, that is the quickest history lesson over. Here's two modern pieces, the one on the right I own, and it is, um, you can see that it has both um, tambour embroidery, and you can see it looks like a little chain stitch where there's no beads. That's yeah. how I know that that's the top of the piece. Instead of looking like little dashes, someone had asked about that, see how that looks like little chain stitch. Um, and the one on the left are a couple of just out of control um, wedding dresses. Aren't they fabulous? Yeah. How much do you think they weigh? Oh, I, I, I've got to say probably 75 pounds. Yeah. I really think, yeah, absolutely. Unbelievable. So yeah. silk is such a strong material, but it reacts so badly with human sweat, human sweat will actually just dry rot it right away. So, um, so a lot of times these pieces were were basically they were lined with with also with either silk or with with cotton, uh, and then the piece would be taken off and then reused for something else. Mm. You know, the idea originally was that you had your dresses remade during uh for every couple of seasons you wouldn't just go out and buy a new dress so, wow yeah it was much more sustainable fashion back then and once again here's the pieces that yeah the tools you need uh i use an embroidery hoop and a little uh clamp on um vice that I got from Amazon that just can hold my piece. Here's the piece I'm working on right now. Uh, and I just put it right in there just like that. And then I can work. And then um, to the right is a, a real, a real embroidery frame. And they can is become small. Yours? What's that? Is this yours? No, I don't own my own really fancy schmancy one. I just do with the cheap ones. Um, but this one on the right is is actually a small version. Right. So that's that's my wish list one. I was going to say something to keep your eye out at the antique stores. I bet, right. you know. 
Yeah, absolutely. You can find some wonderful stuff. So I think um, we just have a couple more slides here to show you before we started. So, okay, here's the hook. And you mm -hmm. can see the one on the right. Can you see that little lever that I was yep, talking I about? Totally can. Yep. Yeah, and the ones on the left uh, don't have them, but the one on the right is the better quality one. So. But it's got the extra length that comes down. So at least it um, would hold it in there versus a normal crochet hook, which is not quite that tapered down. Right, exactly, exactly. The idea is you want to separate, you want to separate the um, the strands of fabric without actually, without breaking them. Because as soon as you break a strand of, of fabric, then you get into real trouble with fraying, especially with a soft, wonderful fabric that's mm -hmm. like silk. So it, it doesn't actually have a sharp point. It kind of has a little rounded so that it can separate them. Even if it comes to a very small point, it's rounded at the end there. Okay. And so that's cool. All right. So, um, yeah. so there's so where some. Do you so, get your fancy floss from? Like these fancy metal um, fibers and stuff. Where do well, where you can get them um, from? From lasis l a c i s dot com. Um, if you've got, if you've got, um, there's there's a couple of really nice UK. If you look up gold work supplies in UK, you can get some good floss. Um, but of course, then you have to wait for it to come. If you go uh, and and buy from India, it it can be real touch and go with the quality. But um, is I don't suppose you no know, Kim Leahy's not here, is she? She recently got got some um, from a shop in Etsy that came from um, that came from the uh, um, from India and she paid not next to nothing for them and the quality was fabulous. So if you get a hold of Kim Leahy, she can tell you also where she gets hers. Mm -hmm. she, she's, she got a hold of some really great supplies. And what's the thickness that you shouldn't go over a certain thickness of, of thread? Uh, there really isn't. There really isn't. The thinner it is, the easier it is to work with, but also it'll tangle more. So, you know, and you can get some really nice, uh, um, if, if you've got a good, a good fabric store, sometimes they'll have wonderful flosses too. So um, I get my, um, my French, here's some French shaped, uh, sequins and I just go on Etsy and I find them. Um, Bijou Beads in uh, Georgia has really nice gold working supplies. Um, and you want to get your beads from Bobby Bead because they're having another <laughs> sale. <laughs> or yeah. from 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 uh, Doris. Yeah, Doris has all those vintage cool stuff. I oh, mean, see, there you so go. Much, so much yeah, cool. Sorry vintage. about that, Doris. I, you know, I'm I'm not as, yeah. as and then um fabric, yeah. you know, I once again I I tend to use um I I tend to when I'm doing like background stuff for picture frames, which is what I'm doing here, I use mosquito netting, but when I um when I'm doing really nice uh, costume work. I usually got go to mood in New York City. Yep, they're the best. Yeah, they're fabulous. That's so cool. So you want you a have... nice, yeah, a nice fabric that you can see through. And I think here's where we remembered to it start. Is. Yeah, this is so. where we started. And so, so... so I think we've now covered all that. Are there any other questions? On so anybody. Um, we have lots of, this is a great presentation, lots of useful info. Thank you so much, Hannah. You're a very good teacher. Um, she says, I'm someone who is skilled less, but you make it look very approachable on um, these techniques. Um, and so I really thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Hannah's oh, all sorry. sorts of um, I sure, think this really is a really fun, fun, fun introduction. 
you know, and, and absolutely, you know, it looks like there's a couple of links there to some good YouTube videos if you want to see some more. Uh, I don't tend to, to teach this uh, via Zoom because, because crochet is one of those things that you have to be able to, you know, help people with attention. So it's not something that we'd be able to do, unfortunately, with Zoom. But, but if, you know, if we ever get me there and, um, and get me to a, uh, to one of the retreats, then, then maybe we could do a class. I think so. it would be fun. It would be fun. Absolutely. But, you know, it is, it is sort of a commitment in terms of supplies. I do have to admit to that. Um, and so how much does a set of the hooks like usually run? Oh, they're not very much. You know, the hooks themselves, the Amazon hooks are, um, I think I found a set like with, that has three separate little, little um, hooks. I think they're, they're maybe $10 on Amazon and Lassus has them, I think for, for maybe $15. It only has the one hook, um, not the set of three different sizes, but the one. Um, so that part isn't the expensive part. It's just when you get into, you know, you have, you do want to have a way to hold it. You have to have both hands free. So, so this and a, um, and the, the, um, the hoops, the hoop is the less expensive version, but this is still looking at about 20 bucks. Um, you know, once you get into, to the, the fancy pants types of, of, um, threads and 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 all the fancy stuff like that that's where you get into real you know i mean it, you, you don't you don't get into anything in beading to save money though you know that no but if you're already doing bead embroidery like right. i've been doing a lot with you i already have the hoops and i had the, right. I got the clamp and so yeah right. the clamp was 14.99 i ordered it on, on amazon and uh, it's really helped with my regular bead embroidery as well right so, um, and, and you know frankly i i think that the tambour going back to marcia's question on when you would use it is i don't i don't think i would actually use tambour and anything that i didn't want a lot of drape on so the tambour um that that crochet technique does allow for drape and movement. So mm -hmm. if I was going to do something like a um, like a cuff bracelet, if, if unless I wanted it to be on a sheer piece and then backed with something, I'd probably do regular embroidery. Mm -hmm. If I want somehow to have some sort of drape or movement, then I'm more likely to do the tambour. So I think that's a better question to your uh, answer to your question uh, than beforehand, Marsha. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Right. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I'm just thinking of a lot of my favorite clothes throughout the century, you know, that a lot of it probably has been tambour embroidery, you know. <laughs> and so, oh my gosh. Yeah, your brain just keeps going now. Where, where to go next, right? <laughs> Oh my gosh. So this has just been so much fun. I'm so excited that you all joined us tonight. Um, we hope you join us for the April 22nd Let's Be Live. Maggie's class will be first from one to two. And then the awareness ribbon will be from <laughs> two to three. And then our um, May meeting hannah our may speaker could you tell us just a minute about who our may speaker is oh absolutely so um who do we have for me <laughs> <laughs> i had to check okay um from for me um amy sweet mcnamara is going to be uh teaching <laughs> oh, excuse me i'm so sorry Amy Sweet McNamara is a um, tambour, not a tambour, I'm sorry, I'm really, is a um, Sutosh artist, and she has taught for Bead and Button a number of times. Her business is Amy Runs with Scissors, but she also makes hats, so I've asked her to talk a little bit about both of those. Nice. Very excited. Yeah, we yeah. haven't had any Sutosh. <laughs> 
um, on our let on our um, meetings yet at all. So we're very excited. We're trying to get a broad spectrum of people that have all kinds of different, um, you know, um, per perspectives on mediums because all of you do so many things of so many different mediums. You never know what you might want to mix into your batch next. So we're very excited for that. And then our May Let's Be Live will be, like I said, Alexandra Sidorenko. And that will be a bead embroidery. Since it's Mother's Day weekend, we're making little goddess earrings. Um, and um, so that'll be lots of fun. And, and so yeah, and she's going to be doing it the whole the whole yeah there's um, just time. just her so for the whole right. two hours it'll be just alexandra and then um so we're trying to do a variety of different things um for and all this in, in june we have uh lewis wilson who has yeah, been for lamp working for 50 years he's a legend in the lamp working world so that's for our member meeting in june okay. so We've got a whole variety for you. We're so darn excited. Um, and so if your friends want to join the Saturday classes, remember to send them the links so they can join, get all the different patterns on umbs.org and the um, calendar page. Um, and we'll be inviting you. Um, so please share the Saturdays. The more the merrier um, to come on Zoom. If you want to come on Facebook as well, it's just sometimes easier to answer questions when you come on Zoom, I think. So we can host up to 100 people. So spread the word. And, and if any of you want to teach ever, we also, like I said, we are taking, um, we want to promote you. You are part of our Bead Society. So we'd love to focus you if you want to do a Let's Bead Live Saturday. That way we can get up your new kits, your new information, your new websites and have people find you. So anyway, you know, as part of the other benefit of being in the Bead Society is we would love to support you as an artist whether you're working or hobby or just little it it's, doesn't matter so share your love of beating to all your friends and um it's a lot of fun so thank you so much for coming um and other than that uh, i we're wish showing, we're, showing, yeah. we're still you might want to um uh, do a little ad for your media media person Oh, yeah, we do need extra help in our social media department and in our promotions for all of our membership. So um, Hannah and I and Lisa have been working hard and we try our best, but we really, really need somebody who is social media very adept, who would like to help us with different things. I know it's hard, but or wants to learn. Or wants to learn because we're trying to get up an Instagram account as well, just so we can cross share and you can do it all at once. There's that little button, apparently I've learned that says post on Facebook at the same time or post on Instagram. So it's, it's, but it's also helpful. And so I also would love to enhance our emails. So, you know, um, our programming and email and everything to get it so that any way you can get your information better to people and encourage people better. Um, we're trying to really help, um, just more committee members. So if you know anybody that would like to be involved or you would like to be involved, spread the word. Um, there's all kinds of help. And the more you get involved, I think the more fun you have. <laughs> or at least I think so. So, and we do have um, um, prizes for people who do volunteer for things. We have a whole bunch of these amazing um Toho challenge kits that our bead society has. So if you volunteer for things, we are putting your names and drawings and giving you presents. Uh, it's not a bribe. It's just a present to say thank you for volunteering. <laughs> or it's a bribe. We don't care. <laughs> and so right. thank you Thanks so much. Yep. Yeah. And so we now have to stop recording before I forget. Right.